สวัสดีค่ะ Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the introduction to academic program session. It is organized to help you make the right study program. The program that you choose should be a good match for your academic goals as well as your personal interest. You will be hearing the guideline to select the program that fit your interest, along with the information from each of the program, including subjects of study. And career opportunities from our faculty member. This event is hosted by the Academic Services and Registration Division, co-hosted by head and chairperson of each of the nine curriculums that we have. We also live on SIIT broadcasting system from this room to seven other rooms. Room 406 and 407 are for students who are interested in engineering program, uh, engineering management and management technology programs. Uh, room 408 to 411 uh, are for students who are interested in computer engineering and digital engineering. And room 502 and 503 are for students who are interested in engineering program. I am Ajahn Sutta Thip Suan Mali and I will be your MC for these sessions. So without further ado, may I please invite our Director of SIIT, Professor Dr. Prithana Nakhon on the stage for an opening speech. Good morning, uh, parents, guardians, and students. Uh, welcome to orientation uh, to our academic program selection for academic, academic year 2022. So uh, I'm glad to see all of you here. Uh, today, I would like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, SIIT. I would like to provide you some small information about SIIT. All right, uh, this slide shows the number of current students. Uh, we have almost 2,000 uh, bachelor degree students and 200 uh, master degree students, 100 something uh, doctoral students. In total, the total number of students is uh, 2,249. This is as of uh, February of this year. And these uh, show the number of alumni that we have now. Uh, so far, until April of this year, we have uh, graduated uh, almost 10,000 bachelor degree alumni and uh, 800 master degree and 266 doctoral degree. In total, 10,000 uh, something of uh, our numbers. And uh, this is uh, quite important, actually. <laughs> this show average income of fresh bachelor's degree graduates. Uh, this is for the graduates of the year 2020. And then, uh, you know, academic year 2020, in fact, end in July 2021. And then uh, Thomasat University provide one more year. Uh, for uh, the university to collect the data. Uh, now, uh, at, at, at uh, August 2022, I think, 70% of the graduates work and 25% uh, pursue further study and about 3.4% have not yet made decision at that time. And the average uh, income of our fresh graduates is around 40,000. Uh, this slide shows comparison of average incomes of fresh bachelor degree graduates from different universities uh, for many years until 2020 academic year. Uh, we have U1, U2, and U3, and so on. <laughs> the purple color is SIITs, all right? So, and the red dashed line here 
represent the maximum. So as you can see, SIT graduates perform very well. We uh, can achieve the maximum average income for almost every year, except this year, 2019. Uh, for 2020, again, we, we are the maximum. U1 is very famous uh, university, faculty of engineering, somewhere inside Bangkok. All right? So, yes, U1. So you can guess. So, of course, we pick all the famous universities in Thailand. We just don't go out and then collect the data from less famous university. And this data, this data we got from uh, Commission of Higher Education. So they have data of all the university. So uh, this data is reliable. Uh, right now, 10% uh, of our students uh, are international students. So this slide show the countries of these international students. You can see that we have students from many countries. In fact, we have from uh, 34 students from 34 countries around the world. And uh, the total number of international students is uh, around 260. Uh, some countries have more students than others. And uh, we, we have these students in bachelor degrees, master degree and also doctoral degree. Uh, these uh, data include both exchange students and degree students. Uh, these uh, show the number of exchange students. I am sure that uh, some of you will be interested in going uh, to study abroad for as exchange student during your four years. Before COVID, the number of outgoing and incoming exchange students uh, are around uh, for incoming around almost 150, some years above 150, outgoing 100 approximately. And then as everyone knows, we, we had COVID and of course the number dropped. And the numbers are picking up now. So I think we, we will return to normalcy very soon. Uh, we have a lot of uh, partners, university partners around the world, uh, more than 80 uh, universities around the world. Uh, around 30% are from Europe, and 20% from Japan, and 20% from ASEAN. Why do we have a lot of partners in Japan? Because, you know, one of the founders of SIT is Keiran Ren. So the uh, business organization in Japan, like Federation of Thai Industry. So uh, that's why we have good relationship with Japanese university. Uh, if you look at the list of university, you will see that these are uh, reputable universities in each country. And these are uh, universities in Europe. And we have MOU with them, so if you would like to later go to study at this university as exchange student, you can. Uh, many universities from Japan, University of Tokyo, uh, of course you know that. And, and we have Hokkaido University, we have many famous universities here. And ASEAN also, we, we have good uh, relationships with uh, many universities in ASEAN. Uh, they uh, have a lot of collaborations with us. I think uh, it is very important for our graduates to, to know uh, people from ASEAN countries because I think later uh, people in this region will have to work together to develop uh, countries in this region. And of course, uh, for uh, in others part of the world, we also have uh, collaboration with, with them. And you will get the detail later. Actually, they, they give me five minutes. I think I used more than five minutes already. So you will get uh, the detail later. Uh, we have, as you know, nine 
uh, programs. Uh, we divide the programs into three groups. We have engineering group one, and in this group you have uh, chemical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering and logistics systems, and electrical engineering. And then in group two, engineering group two, we have computer engineering and digital engineering. And we have also the third group, management group. And there are two programs in management group, management technology and engineering management. So this will be all information I would like to uh, talk today. So I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, our director, for the information. So uh, let me uh, move to the program selection. The first part of the session begins with the overview of the selection process. Deputy Director for Academic Affairs, Associate Professor Dr. Chawalit Jin Anand will talk about the selection criteria and the timeline that are important for you. So please join me in welcoming him on the stage. Okay. Okay, good morning, parents and guardians, students. Uh, my name is Chawalit. I will be the one who gives you the guidance on the program selection. I'm waiting for the slide to appear. Okay. All right, so for this part of my, let me try to move myself a little bit. Uh, I will give you the idea how can we select the program uh, that's what we are to here today, okay? So, uh, as Professor Pukta already mentioned, we have three groups. Uh, first, engineering group. Uh, second, computer engineering and digital engineering. And the third group, uh, we have management. So, these are based on the courses that you selected in the first year when you apply to SIT as well. Okay? And based on this program, uh, all of you will have the chance to select your program starting from this coming Monday, okay? And you have the time until Friday, okay? From Monday until Friday. And it will be announced on Wednesday, June 21st online. Everything will be done online, okay? And I think students know uh, where to go. Right? We, you just go to the registration website. You just log in, and there will be the step that you can uh, follow through to select your program. And students may ask, what are the things that we use to rank the selection of the students? Uh, we use eGPA. Okay. EGPA is uh, a little bit similar to the GPA, but we just use it as the equivalent grade point average. Uh, we use the classes that you're supposed to take uh, on the first year to calculate all of the GPA. Uh, for example, okay, uh, for the classes, this is the first semester, you're supposed to take uh, this one eight courses, a little bit too much, uh, normally seven courses. Uh, some courses you get withdraw. Now uh, we will calculate it as F, uh, if you get withdraw on that class. Some courses you didn't register, we will assume that you get an F, uh, so that it will be easier for us to calculate it. Uh, the same thing for the course that you get an I. We will assume that first it will be get an F, and we use it to calculate the eGPA for the whole year. Yeah. And after the eGPA is calculated, we will rank you from the highest GPA, uh, highest eGPA to the lowest, and based on your first choice, we will give you the ranking of those choices that you select. Okay. And student may ask, what if the result come out and you don't get the choices that you select? You, you can change, but the change 
can be made if you change across the discipline in the first semester of August this year, starting from August this year. When we say academic year 2023, starting from August, you can select, for example, across the program from engineering to management. For example, engineering program is mechanical engineering and you want to change to management technology. This one you can change on the first semester. But if you change within the same discipline, within the same discipline, for example, from management technology to engineering management, you have to wait for the second semester. Okay, the same thing for the engineering group. If you want to change from mechanical engineering to industrial engineering, you have to wait for the second semester. Second semester start from January. Okay, start from January in next year. And we make the condition, simple condition is that for the student who would like to change, uh, we request that only those who have the GPA greater than 1.8. Uh, for those who GPA are lower than 1.8, you might take some time to help yourself increase the GPA first. Uh, Alright, so we would like to make a big remark. Uh, if you change the program, uh, you might be delayed on your graduations because there are lots of courses that you're supposed to take on the first semester or second semester, then you need to wait until you have time to take it again. All right, so I, I make a very quick one. So again, just emphasize that the time starting from this Monday until Friday, you log online to the registration website and we will announce it on June 21st, on Wednesday. Okay, that's all of my part. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Ajahn Shaolit, for giving important information about the academic, academic program selection regulations. So next, uh, we will move to the information session. Uh, we would like to invite uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ekawit Nantajiwarawat to give you all about the information of the... Sawadee So let's bring us back to the program in this room. These are for students and parents who are interested in our engineering programs. Uh, let's start from our first engineering curriculum. Civil engineers are the ones who build our roads, bridges, airports, ensure that our houses we live in are structurally sound. Without civil engineering, a society could not function. And in addition to that, with the advent of the smart technology, 3D printing, automation, so civil engineering are no longer stuck on a desk designing bridges or building with paper and pencil. The work of civil engineering are interesting and um, it, is not, it is not only essential but it is interesting. So let's hear more information about civil engineering. Please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Mongkut Piantana Kunchai on the stage. Ha. Hello, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, introducing me, okay. Again, I'm the Associate Professor, uh, Dr. Mongkut Piantana Kunshai. I'm currently uh, the head of the School of Civil Engineering at SIIT, and today I'm really happy to introduce you to our, our uh, school and our curriculum. Uh, 
It's just a moment. I think. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. Okay, just a moment. Okay. How, how can I use this one? Okay. Um, the slide doesn't move, sorry. My shy. <laughs> Sorry, this. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, what is civil engineering, right? We have to look at the, the roots of the words. Uh, civil means a citizen, right? So, and as you know, uh, it's a subject for everyone. Right, and since the the ancient days, okay, until the the modern days, yeah, it's involved the civilization of the the people, right? It's involved a uh, construction, involve uh, uh, infrastructures and everything, all right. So, uh, what is civil engineering? Okay, civil engineering is the uh, subjects that uh, involve especially the uh, design, okay? So every construction start with the design, okay? Constructions and as well as uh, management of the infrastructures, all right? And when we deal with what well, buildings, bridge, uh, civil infrastructures, as well as uh, transportation networks, all right? That's uh, what we do. So it's involve a lot of people and it's really interesting and, and uh, important for the society. It's also uh, a challenging and rewarding uh, uh, field of study. Okay, it's challenging because uh, it's a subject that turns your uh, imaginations. Okay, people think about oh, what it looks like, what's uh, going to construct the structures, and it makes a uh, reality. Okay, people, we make uh, it's become a reality. That means when you construct uh, the 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 uh, the building or bridge or everything, then uh, it's become reality. And it's also a, a rewarding uh, profession. That means if you are uh, involved, okay, if you involve in those uh, projects, and then uh, some days you pass to the project you can tell your parents okay or your uh, students that okay okay i involved with the construction of this building construction of this bridge okay and then it's become your legacy it doesn't disappear because uh civil infrastructure normally lasts for a long time all right Um, let me introduce about civil engineering fields because uh, when you study civil engineering here at SIIT and most of the curriculum, uh, we talk about general civil engineering. But in terms of general civil engineering, students can do everything, right? But we provide the, the, the basis for the uh, uh, civil engineering. And however, when we talk about general civil engineering, there are a lot of things inside. For example, uh, we have a field of structural engineering, so st students study how to design an uh, analysis of a uh, man-made structure, okay? Whether it's building, it's bridge, it's uh, tunneling underground structures, okay? That's uh, structural engineering. We need somebody to analyze, okay, the behavior of structures, also design. We also have a field of uh, material engineering. Okay, material engineering involves uh, design and analysis of uh, novel construction material. Okay, because in construction nowadays with the modern technology, we also use uh, modern construction technology. Okay, including material. So, student, a uh, student, we have a chance to to study about uh, material engineering. Okay, in civil engineering. 
Also, uh, we have soil and foundation engineering. Okay, so every normally every structure as uh, uh, situated or located on the foundation. So this is a very important uh, field of study. So this study study about uh, the design analysis of the foundation and also the underground structure. All right, as you can see uh, in Bangkok now a day, uh, a lot of construction occur, especially underground construction. All right, especially water work system, uh, subway system. Okay, this kind of work uh, requires civil engineer, especially in the soil and foundations construction uh, field of study. We also have a field of uh, transportation engineering because uh, infrastructure in a lot of infrastructure involve uh, transportation, especially highway, right, uh, railway, right, airport, everything, right. So it involves analysis and design of transportation infrastructures. And also we have a uh, subfield of uh, water and coastal engineering, okay, or some of uh, infrastructure involve. Uh, Transportation of water, for example, uh, uh, canal system, okay, pipe system, and then and also the uh, coastal uh, structure system. For example, if you build the port, right, then we have to study how to uh, construct the port, especially uh, the wind and wave flotation system. Okay, so water and coastal engineering is also very important, and then in. Uh, SIT civil engineering uh, faculty members. We also have uh, all of these uh, special uh, specialists in this kind of uh, subjects. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have a construction engineering and management because uh, every construction needs a plan, schedule, and execute of the construction activity. So we have to do it uh, efficiently, okay, using modern technology. So uh, we also have a uh, faculty member in this uh, field of study. <laughs> okay, uh, so how, where the civil engineer work when they graduate, right? Normally they can work in uh, various uh, organization. Uh, most of infrastructure are supervised by the government agency. So many of our alumni work in the government agency, for example, uh, water work uh, authorities, Department of Highway, Expressway Authority, Airport Authority of Thailand as well, uh, many, many, okay? They can work also in private sectors, for example, uh, uh, design a company or consulting company that uh, uh, work closely with the government projects, all right? They can work uh, in the country as well as uh, internationally. Many of our alumni work in the international projects across the world, okay? Uh, if uh, it's a profession that uh, maybe if you like to go outside, you can be a site engineer, you can supervise construction, you can uh, make construction possible, but if you don't like, you can also uh, work in an office, design using software, uh, and then you also can work in the research lab or university, okay, if you like a modern technology. Let me uh, introduce to our school and our curriculum, okay? First uh, of all, uh, our uh, faculty members. Uh, this is a picture of uh, our faculty member from from backside. <laughs> okay. We visit some uh, construction sites in Vietnam together at that time. I think it's the construction of the subway. Okay, let's see who is who in our uh, school. First of all, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Dr. Prithan Anakorn. He is also uh, our SIT director. That uh, he will come you today. Uh, his research focused on uh, computational mechanics, uh, especially uh, structural engineering, uh, finite element technology, structural optimization, design automation. We also have uh, Professor Dr. Somnuk Dangtem Srikun. Okay, he is a leading professor in in uh, our country in the field of material engineering. Okay. He do uh, modeling of concrete behavior, 
uh, special concrete, okay, helps monitoring of the uh, structures and maintenance of the structures. Okay, he also uh, ran a research uh, center under the School of Civil Engineering. Uh, we also have uh, Professor uh, Dr. Amin. Okay, uh, he is a uh, specialized in soil and foundation engineering. Okay, his research involves uh, soil engineering, soil stabilization, uh, and then uh, geochemistry and so on. Uh, and we have uh, water and coastal engineering. We have uh, Dr. Win Yu, Dr. Napitikon. Okay. He focused on mathematical modeling of the wave, okay, uh, coastal engineering and hydraulic of operational and as well as hydrology. And then uh, myself, okay, I am uh, uh, Dr. Mongkut Pintana Kunshai. Uh, my field of study is a transportation engineering and management. So normally I involve in the study of uh, transportation system uh, planning design and analysis, for example, uh, evacuation planning, traffic simulation, and so on. And last but not least, uh, we have uh, construction engineering and management. So we have uh, Dr. Kieng Sak Panuwat Manit, okay? He specializes in uh, involved digital engineering, uh, innovation and safety in construction, big data analytics, and also green building and sustainable construction. So our school is quite special. We also have a, a full-time faculty member to teach and do research, right? We also have a special types of a faculty member we call research faculty members. They belong to a research center under our school, okay? Um, their main uh, responsibility will be research, but sometimes they will share and teach in our uh, curriculum, all right? So we have a, Construction and Research Technology Research Center, we call CONTACT, okay? And then we have Dr. Warangkana, Dr. Pakhawat, Dr. Kanchai, Dr. Panthep, and Dr. Kritiya to help us teaching our students. Okay, we also have uh, supporting staff. We have uh, two uh, secretary, okay? We have Kun Lek Patanan and Kun U uh, Mondisha, okay? And as well as we have uh, two laboratory staff, uh, we have a laboratory engineer, Kun Keng Natapat, and uh, one technician, okay, Kun, Kun Fluk uh, Natawat. Okay, let me talk about uh, civil engineering curriculum, okay? Uh, this is a four year curriculum, okay? And then uh, normally st the students start in the first year, okay? When they finish the first year, they uh, uh, go to the second year. When they enter to the our school, in the second year, we will have uh, basic engineering knowledge for them. The example of course that involve uh, basic engineering knowledge involve, for example, uh, engineering statics, okay, they will learn uh, how to uh, analyze the stability of the structures, the force system, and so on. Uh, we study mechanic of solids, okay, in the second uh, semester. Uh, hydraulics, as well as the surveying, okay. And this uh, course of surveying that we have to do a uh, surveying camp in the summer semester, all right? And that's important uh, subjects for a uh, basis of the uh, civil engineer. Uh, for the third year, our, uh, we decide our curriculum to have uh, apply civil engineering knowledge, okay? So they, most of the uh, subjects will be uh, analysis and design of structures and, and infrastructure. So we have a uh, soil mechanics, we have reinforcement concrete design, timber and steel design, and highway engineering. All right. At the uh, third year, in this, in the third year, they will have to choose from three tracks. All right. Uh, the most common track that uh, the student uh, choose. Okay, most of the students choose senior project track. Okay, in this senior project track, they will do uh, research with uh, our faculty member in the final year, all right? Uh, second track is a foreign exchange track, okay? So in the final year for this track, they will study abroad in our uh, 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 MOU, okay? So you, uh, 
as a university uh, overseas. And the last uh, track is uh, extended training. Okay, so they, they will spend uh, one semester. Okay, to to do extended training in the selected company. Okay, in the last semester of the uh, fourth year. Okay, but when you choose the track in the third year, okay, uh, they will study slightly differently. Okay, so in summer semester, senior project track and foreign exchange track. They will undertake a uh, civil engineering training, okay, one credit. While in uh, extended en uh, training, they will undertake a uh, six credit of free elective, okay, in the summer semester. Okay, now we have a uh, final year, okay, final year of the study. So normally, the final year of study, we plan to have uh, advanced civil engineering uh, subjects for them. For example, finite element methods, construction engineering and management, and special study in civil engineering. And normally, we offer a specialized civil engineering course that um, sometimes offered by the uh, foreign uh, visiting faculty member from uh, famous universities such as from Japan and other countries. Okay, so the student will have a chance to, to learn a specialized topic in the fourth year. So in the second semester for senior project track, they will do research okay, in the civil engineering project with our faculty member and uh, uh, also register for uh, free elective courses. For foreign exchange, they will do uh, uh, Sorry, uh, they will undertake the course uh, in civil engineering, okay, uh, in the, uh, our partner university and also as a fee elective, okay. And also the last track, under uh, extended training, they will do a uh, six credit extended training, okay, in the fourth year. Okay, if you study in civil engineering, you have uh, many opportunities uh, for you. For example, you have also opportunity to uh, uh, broaden your, your experience. For example, going to uh, technical tours, site visit, and sometimes uh, to uh, ex uh, exchange program that we offer okay, to a uh, foreign university. Sometimes it's a short-term program. All right. And if you choose uh, to do research, then you have an exciting research uh, experience. So along the, the course of the study, you have a chance to interact with uh, our faculty member that actively do research okay, in various fields of study, especially uh, uh, modern technology. For example, uh, we have uh, 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 for example, we have uh, uh, mixed reality technology okay, that uh, involve a uh, computer and, and vision system in order to apply to construction uh, site, okay, big data analytics, okay, building information system, uh, finite element analysis, as well as uh, a traffic simulation, all right, if you do cine project. Uh, this is some of the, the, the uh, research from our faculty members. Okay, and I'm happy to say that uh, our, our uh, curriculum also being accredited by the Council of Engineers. Okay. Okay, so I would like to welcome everyone to the family of uh, SI, uh, SIT uh, CET family. Okay, thank you very much, and, and I'm waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ajahn Mongkut Ka. Uh, in case that you have questions, please hold your question until the end of these sessions. We will have the opportunity to ask and welcome any questions that for our faculty members. We would like to move to the second program. So if you, look, if you are looking for modern and applicant, applicable scientific work like nanotechnologies, bioengineering, or scientific work that lead to a better nutrition, improved health, greater social mobility, better protection of environment, it is a chemical engineer. I would like to invite Assistant Professor Kaninung Nora to present the information about chemical engineering curriculum. Okay, 
Um, good morning, um, parents, guardians, and students. I would say that I'm very delighted being here in front of you, introducing our curriculum and how can we adapt ourselves into the modern era. Okay, um, to start with, uh, actually, we have um, prepared some of the video um, in order to make a brief introduction, what is the chemical engineering and um, who are we and what are we um, doing in the uh, modern era. Um, even though the video is in Thai, because we are planning to uh, launch it soon publicly, but um, we also provide the subtitle in English. We have a เราก็เลยมีหน้าที่ในการออกแบบกระบวนการที่ต้องเซฟสําหรับผู้ใช้ผู้ปฏิบัติงานแล้วก็ยังต้องเป็นมิตรต่อสิ่งแวดล้อม
After graduation, chemical engineering can work in a lot of fields, including the petroleum and petrochemical. But apart from that, we will be able to work as well in the food industry, the drug design, and the drug de um, some part of the medicine industry, and some part of the energy, renewable energy, and some of the fine chemical synthesis and industrial process, as well as the cosmetic cosmetic and well-being, including um, the plastic and data analytics as well as some part of the R&D as well. So that's why, as you can see here, that we can work across in many fields, so which allows us to work across a diverse range of industry. So this is some, some part of the uh, company that we have our alumni working with, uh, including the Hollybird and Schramberger, um, Dow Chemical, the PTT, and so on. So we have a lot of alumni working and, and many more is coming. Then let's talk about the subject. As I mentioned earlier, that is not all about chemistry. So the concept is, uh, during the first year, you will learn the basic engineering course, including a lot of um, mathematics, chemistry, and some of the basic science, uh, as well as some of the basic engineering, just, just like the drawing, mechanics. But um, when you move further into the second year, uh, we will have some of the mathematics, chemistry, and physics as well as the product, uh, programming, computer programming as well. And then when you move a little bit further to the third and the fourth year, we will offer you some of the principle of the chemical engineering courses in order to give you the idea what is the chemical engineering is. And then we will let you apply that knowledge into the applied engineering course. And then in the fourth year, you will be able to use the concept of the data analytics as well as the design of experiments in order to make the uh, plan design and the project management. Uh, I would like to mention here that SIT is one of the leader in order to integrate the digital technology into the chemical engineering curriculum. So which will enable our graduates to not only the lead as the engineer, but also will let you grow alongside the digital era. So I will give you a little bit more about this detail. With our partner, which is the uh, TICHE, which is the Thai Institute of Chemical Engineering and the Applied Chemistry, we work together to design some of the special module in order to work close with the industry partner. And then we will um, provide the ideal platform of the knowledge transformation for the smart industry. So what is it? So what is it for? With this course that we're working with our partner, our graduates will have the idea of the overall and the component of what is the digital technology for the smart industry, as well as the data preparation and visualization, and then some of the basic machine learning and optimization. And then most importantly, the student, the graduates will have a chance to uh, experience the real industrial problem solving skills. So that's why, imagine that we can uh, understand both of the engineering domain, the language of the engineering, so we can communicate, we place ourselves in the middle, so we can communicate um, well with the engineering fields. In addition, we can also communicate with the data scientists as well. And then most importantly, apart from the data analytics, the data scientists, the digital transformation things, chemical engineers concern a lot about environmental. As you may know that recently, um, we have the issue about the global warming, the carbon emission, and then the regulation will launch very soon about the um, carbon reduction. So with that regulation, a lot of industry will have the, um, the concern, how can they reduce the carbon emission during the industrial process? 
So that's why I give you some detail about uh, how can we get into the net zero in the future. In 2050, the government and the global um, partner uh, had some give the plan in order to get into the net zero carbon emission. So that's why the big portion comes, comes to the carbon capture and utilization as well as the storage. In order to do so, um, to get into the net zero, um, this will require chemical engineering which can involve into the developing and implementing the technology that can reduce the greenhouse gas emission effectively as well as some of the technology in order to capture and utilize and storage the carbon, uh, the greenhouse gas. And then some of the renewable energy technologies so this, this can be some part that chemical engineering can involve into the um, carbon net zero in the near future. So then, um, to finish with, I would say that um, for chemical engineering, uh, we concern is not only about the efficiency of the process and, and the industry, but also we concern a lot about the environment. So that's why um, every industrial process will need the chemical engineering. So uh, hopefully I will be able to introduce you into our program in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ajahn Kanin, for very good information on chemical engineering. We move on to the third one. Electrical engineers are the forefront of some of today's most important innovations. From using electricity for light to the introduction of electric vehicles, today, electrical engineers have managed to significantly impact the world at large to their contribution across various fields and industry. For instance, power generation, telecommunication, transportation, energy efficiency, medical technology, robotics, and automation. The role of electrical engineers in the future is only expected to increase as the demand for technological advancement goes up. I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Ban Lu Si Su Xin Wong to present the information about EC program. Good morning. Welcome to my presentation. A brief introduction to electrical engineering. EE, right? Uh, we have uh, many choices to choose. Uh, today, we shall focus uh, on the e electrical engineering. EE for short. Uh, shall we have a quick look at the EE faculty members. Uh, the chairperson of the EE program, Assistant Professor uh, Dr. Papan Suksompong. His uh, research interest includes wireless communications. Uh, I myself, Associate Professor Dr. Balu, Si Su Chin Wong. My research interest includes the microelectronics. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Wali Kong Pawet Nun, right? Her research, research interest includes the robot robust control systems, a uh, main control system in her field. Associate Professor Dr. Charlie Delun Lab Nopanat, 
his research interests uh, include the signal processing. Associate Professor Dr. Tohiaki Kondo from Japan, his research interests include the digital image processing. Uh, the last but not least, Assistant Professor uh, Dr. Itise Nin Kampang. His research interest includes the mechatronics. Uh, we, we have six uh, faculty members at the moment. Uh, shall we have a quick look at the 2022 EE curriculum? Uh, is a certified by the Councils of Engineers, uh, Thailand. Right? So in option one, uh, we have the electrical engineering, communications. Option two, electrical engineering in power. Uh, we have 150 credits altogether. The first group is general basic courses, major courses, and fee elective courses. Okay. Uh, shall we look at the first one? General basic courses includes uh, social science, humanities, science and mathematics, uh, languages. Uh, secondly, major courses, uh, we may see 2.1, right, basic courses here, and 2.2, right? oh, oh, 2.2, right? uh, specialized courses. 